Okay, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here this afternoon for a uh, storm update. Uh, I'm Erie County Executive Mark Polencars, and I'm joined by uh, many of my colleagues in county government, including our Erie County Sheriff John Garcia, our Department of Public Works Commissioner William Geary, our Department of Health uh, Commissioner Gail Burstein, and our uh, Deputy County Executive Lisa Shamara. And we're also joined by Karen Gambino from uh, Deaf Access Services to provide the American Sign Language. Uh, we have some, a lot of information to share, uh, some of it not so good uh, from what we're seeing in the field and what we've, information we've received recently and also what this front may do based on information we have from the National Weather Service over the next two and a half days. Uh, so of course a state of emergency has been declared uh, in Erie County, the city of Buffalo, the city of Lackawanna, the town of Amherst, Town of Cheektowaga, Town of Clarence, Town of Evans, Town of Hamburg, Town of Orchard Park, Town of Tonawanda, the Village of Angola, the Village of Blaisdell, Village of Depew, Village of Hamburg, Village of Lancaster, and Village of Orchard Park. Uh, the worst portion of the storm is hitting basically on the Orchard Park Hamburg line uh, where the Erie County Fair is, uh, Highmark Stadium is, the old McKinley Mall. Uh, and into other areas. That's not to say if you don't see your town in here, it means everything's well. There are some really bad sections in the town of West Seneca. There are some really bad sections in the town of Wales and the town of Aurora. But these are the ones that have made an official declaration of a state of emergency in addition to my declaration as a state of emergency for the entire county. Uh, the travel ban and advisory zones, the travel ban is in effect for the following communities. The city of Buffalo, fr uh, from downtown uh, and south below the William Street line, which is roughly half of the size of the city of Buffalo, not exactly, but roughly half of the city of Buffalo. It encompasses primarily uh, South Buffalo, Lovejoy, as well as part of the Ellicott Council Districts. Uh, we also have a state of emergency in the city of Lackawanna. The city of Lackawanna has been hammered. As we'll talk about, Erie County is helping the city of Lackawanna out. The town of Cheektowaga, the, the town of Lancaster, uh, the town of Alden, the town of West Seneca, the town of Elma, the town of Marilla, the town of Hamburg and Orchard Park, as we said, ground zero for this storm. The town of Aurora, the town of Wales, the town of Evans, the town of Eden, the town of Boston. Do not drive in the travel ban zone. In some of these areas, our uh, Department of Public Works plows and Erie County Sheriff's deputies are reporting there is more than four feet of snow. We've seen some of the projections and the, the calculations from the Weather Service which are saying just about four feet. Well, our men and women on the ground and in the vehicles are saying there is more than four feet of snow uh, in many of these parts, and it is still snowing. The reports we've just had is it's some of the worst conditions that our public works uh, uh, department and sheriff's deputies have ever faced in a storm because it's starting to snow at such a very high rate of snow. And part of the problem is there are people that are in vehicles in these areas trying to traverse through them. They are getting stuck. Our plows are getting stuck. Law enforcement vehicles are getting stuck. It is very difficult. So do not drive in the banned zone. You are putting yourself and others at risk. Even our big rig snow plows are getting stuck in some points. Uh, we are just, we're advised of a situation where the Red Cross was trying to deliver uh, cots and other equipment to help people who are at the Hamburg Senior Center who were taken off the thruway and they can't get through with their vehicle. So it's a very, 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 difficult and dangerous situation. If you get stuck, you're calling for help and we don't know if we can get to you right away because of the difficulty of the situation and what really is a blinding snowstorm. Uh, road closures. Uh, you've probably heard a lot about this, but the thruway is officially closed from exit 53, which is the I-190, to exit 59 in Dunkirk. Uh, commercial vehicles are prohibited from the Pennsylvania line to exit 46, which is Batavia or out past Batavia, the 390. The Route 219 is closed the entirety of Erie County from the Thruway to Springville. The Route 400 is closed its full length, 
which would be from the thruway in West Seneca to Route 16 in the town of Aurora, Wales. Uh, Route 5, the Buffalo Skyway, is closed from Tiff Street to the I-190, the Niagara Thruway, and to the downtown corridor. Uh, these roads are closed because they are very difficult, very difficult to pass, and we need the plows out there to keep them clear so that when we can open it, we can open it as quickly as possible. Uh, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Sheriff Garcia to talk about what his deputies are seeing and the actions that are being taken by the Sheriff's Office in the storm, which unfortunately is starting to look a lot like the storm that we saw eight years ago. Sheriff? Thank you, County Executive. What we're seeing out there are the, uh, the roads are uh, not in any type of travel condition. So we had on the 400 where approximately six cars went off the road. Uh, it, it made us send a deputy there. Uh, the deputy went off the road. So again, as the uh, county executive said, let's not put our first responders in danger. What I uh, had the opportunity to do with the uh, closings of schools and county buildings and courts and so forth is redeploy all these deputies that were working security posts and get them out on the uh, roads. So we have um, a lot of additional personnel out there and uh, I could uh, reassure you this, uh, if, if you need help, call 911. We are working with our partners in all the towns, villages, city, state and so forth we'll get someone out there but please do not put first responders in danger don't put yourself in danger uh, stay home and uh, and look after your neighbors uh, check on your neighbors if anyone needs assistance please call 911 let us know and um, again uh, be careful and uh, god bless everybody and we'll get through this i want to say thank you to the buffalo bills for not having a game on on sunday because all those assets that we would have had to redeploy there and uh, would have uh, caused a lot of problems. So, um, again, thank you, and uh, we'll move on. Uh, thank you, Sheriff, and I agree. Uh, if you've seen, the Buffalo Bills posted some photos of what it looks like at the stadium. Uh, this is not about having a dome. This is about not even being able to ensure that the roads are passable around the stadium facility. It really is some of the worst conditions are in that area where you have the border of Hamburg and Orchard Park. Uh, we're also hearing r really bad conditions in areas associated with like the Lakeview ver uh, portion of uh, the town of Hamburg. So uh, I agree with the sheriff. Uh, if you have a problem, a serious issue, you need to call 911, please call 911. But be, please be aware, the conditions are such, it's very difficult for us to respond in as quick a time as possible because uh, it's just very difficult for any vehicle to get down the road. Nevertheless, what would be our normal emergency response vehicles? Uh, with this, I'm going to turn it over to our Commissioner of Public Works, Bill Gary, to talk about how we're responding, what we're doing, and how we're helping other municipalities uh, by having contracted with a number of parties uh, to assist them in snow removal in their communities. Good afternoon. Uh, as County Executive said, I can't stress it enough, the conditions in that um, red zone from the south end of Lackawanna in through Hamburg, Orchard Park, are conditions that nobody should be in. Unfortunately, we have crews out there right now working side by side with law enforcement, emergency responders, trying to get people that are stuck. Uh, we know of multiple cars that are stuck there. The county's just contracted with four tow trucks. We have uh, a lot more coming on. We're in communications with AAA. We know that AAA is trying to get out there. Unfortunately, there's over 60 inches of snow on some of those roads. Uh, McKinley Parkway is probably uh, with 60 plus inches along the edge. We lost a snowblower. Uh, the, these snowblowers are eight feet wide and six feet high. It broke down. We have two plow trucks over there. New York State DOT has assets on mile strip where there's numerous trucks and vehicles stuck. Um, as the county executive said, a lot's changed since 6 a.m. this morning. The last nine hours, we brought on over 40 high lifts, articulating front end loaders that could scoop up three yards of snow. Um, it, they're, they're massive. It's a, almost a small car the size of those buckets. And we're systematically working one by one, similar to we did in 2014, to get to all those stuck vehicles, get them staged back in uh, an area over by McKinley Mall. But we're having... Uh, the visibility right now from the field just before we came up here is barely 20 feet. Snow is coming down at a rate of four to five inches an hour. 
the other part is this is really water uh, latent type snow so it's extremely heavy but underneath the snow is a sheet of ice so uh, there's almost every force that could be working against us working against us right now um, we're really looking for a reprieve from the weather come nine o'clock this evening but all the municipalities uh, right now they like said we're assisting the city of Lackawanna they're digging out the side streets with the contractor we've got um, quite a few in the town of Hamburg town of Orchard Park the village of Orchard Park uh, down in Evans, Angola, town of West Seneca, and then of course working with our um, Erie County forces because just all our equipment's not enough. Uh, the areas impacted, as you can see in the red, um, our system, we're seeing these snow bands, they're oscillating maybe five miles to the north and then five miles back to the south. So it's going from the southern edge of the city where the driving band is all the way down to those areas in the southern part of the county. Uh, again, these uh, accumulations, it's it's unfathomable to see this type of snow come down in such a short period of time um, we have professionals out there we're not going to put any of our crews in a safe unsafe situation however we're going to do everything we can to get those vehicles unstuck and hopefully get everybody out and um, get the the region back on its feet by Sunday uh, that turn it back over to you County Executive Thank you, Commissioner. This is the Emergency Operations Center. It's been open since 7 p.m. yesterday. It will be open through the duration of the storm. It is uh, manned and women <laughs> staffed uh, by the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security Emergency Services, the Erie County Sheriff's Office, the Erie County Department of Public Works, the Erie County Health Department, as well as others, Environment and Planning, as well as our partners from uh, New York State, and other municipalities, uh, this is a, a, a somewhat hive of activity. Uh, we're trying to keep it as the least amount of people possible so we can have more people out in the field doing the work. But we will be here uh, for the duration of this event, uh, and we will continue to uh, coordinate the response for our region out of this location. Uh, I, I want to talk about the, the most recent data we received from the National Weather Service for the remainder of this storm. This is really kind of depressing. This is not from me, this is not from us, this is from the National Weather Service. Uh, from 1 p.m. today, uh, and the, these slides were made at approximately 1 p.m., to 7 p.m. today, the National Weather Service was forecasting that up to 18 inches of snow were gonna fall in parts of this band. Uh, and mo a lot of the area that is currently getting hammered still would expect from 1 p.m. today to 7 p.m., at least 18 inches and maybe 12 inches of snow. So this is in addition to what fell in the overnight hours and through 1 p.m. today. Then, as you can see, from 7 p.m. tonight to 7 a.m. tomorrow, the band will still pretty much be in the same location. And in the closest area near Lake Erie, they're projecting still a possibility of another 18 inches in that 12-hour period. Uh, 12 inches for most of that area, so that's additional inch an hour uh, for areas that have, as the commissioner noted, some of it has probably received five feet at this point, 60 inches plus. Uh, it hasn't been officially confirmed by the National Weather Service, but our, our staff are saying that these appear to be not drifts, but over four and a half feet to five feet of snow that's on the ground right now. Uh, and then this is the final slide, <laughs> very depressing, from 1 p.m. today to 4 a.m. on Monday. Uh, they were projecting that in some areas it was possible that 24 inches to 30 inches of additional snow will have fallen during that period. The vast majority of it in the same areas that are getting hammered right now and have been hammered for the last few days. Lackawanna, Hamburg, Orchard Park, parts of Cheektowaga, parts of West Seneca, Evans, but all of Erie County will continue to receive some snow during that period. So let's hope that this forecast is not accurate. Let's hope that this band breaks up, but the, the weather service has been pretty spot on so far with the rates of snow and when they were gonna hit. So this is very concerning because we already got our first report of a building collapse in the town of Hamburg. Uh, we're starting to see some other issues because of the heavy wet snow. And if you add this much more snow on, another two to potentially two and a half feet or three feet of snow, we're gonna have more significant problems and, and issues. Uh, I have to unfortunately announce uh, that we have confirmed two deaths associated with this storm. Uh, two males uh, who have unfortunately have perished as a result of exertion having cardiac events associated with snow shoveling 
and snow blowing. Uh, and I do want to offer my deepest condolences to their families at this very sad time. This snow is exceptionally heavy and wet, very wet. I came home last night, I tried to shovel off my, my sidewalk and I got it done, but I felt like I was going to break my back because it was so heavy. And we are reminding everybody that you have to shovel smart uh, because uh, cardiac events, heart attacks are always occur in these situations and unfortunately we appear to have lost our first two county residents as a result of that. So I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Burstein to talk a little bit more about that as well as some other issues that the Department of Health wants to warn about. Dr. Burstein. Thank you. Thank you. So these are very, very sad occurrences. So I just want to talk about some tips to, to try to get us through the storm safely and healthy. So as again, as the county executive mentioned, um, it can be very, very dangerous for some individuals, people who have high blood pressure, people who have any type of cardiac history to go out and shovel the snow, especially right now when the show is so heavy because it's so wet that uh, the, uh, in a, the, the combination of the cold weather and the extra exertion of the force that you're using to try to shovel the snow is too much for somebody's heart and um, it has any type of other cardiac issues like high blood pressure or any any other type of cardiac issues so please just let, let your driveway fill up with snow or you can there's really nowhere to go right now or you can hire say a younger person from your neighborhood give them a few bucks and uh, they can clear your driveway but we really want to stay safe Another thing that we really have to worry about is uh, carbon monoxide poisoning from generators. We know that uh, many people, unfortunately, are going to be losing their heat uh, during this storm, and they may have generators to keep the lights on, which is great. However, we have to be very, very careful because generators' exhaust contain carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a gas that is tasteless, it's odorless, and it's deadly. And the only way that you're going to know that you have carbon monoxide in your in your air is if you have a carbon monoxide detector or if uh, unfortunately people start becoming ill. So the safest thing, the safest place to run a generator is at least 20 feet away from your house, 20 feet away from any door, window, or vent that leads into your house. You have to stay safe. Um, uh, uh, signs of carbon monoxide poisoning is you might start to feel that you have a headache, uh, fatigue, um, dizziness, uh, confusion, um, and if uh, several people develop those signs at once that is a telltale sign of carbon monoxide poisoning starting. So the safest thing to do, even though it's cold, is go outside, get fresh air, and call 911. Next thing is uh, just to check on your neighbors. Um, we know that many people live alone, they're isolated, um, especially our older adults. Uh, older adults have a lower metabolism, so they don't generate as much heat as, uh, as uh, younger adults or children, so they become cold much more uh, easily. And then also, their nervous systems may not uh, allow them to detect that they may be becoming cold. So it's really important just to go over your neighbors, um, and especially uh, older adults, check on how you're, they're doing, make sure that that their heat's high enough, you know, make sure they have food, make sure that they're eating their food and they're drinking and that, that they're okay. And there's no other health conditions that they have that really needs to be addressed. So it's really important. We're the city of good neighbors. Let's really act on that and check on our neighbors. Next is uh, really want to make sure as a pediatrician that we're thinking about safe sleeping for babies. Uh, we know that uh, during the winter months when it's cold out, you know, parents rightly become concerned about their babies becoming uh, if cold um, and if, it, if it's if it's cold outside. However, there are um, smart smart ways to keep your baby warm. Um, first of all, you do not you want to put your baby to bed in what we call the naked crib concept. So we don't want any blankets or pillows or anything fluffy. Just want a flat surface on the bed firm mattress um, to put your baby to sleep in and yeah it could be they could get cold so it's best to uh, warm them with appropriate clothing so uh, pajamas that have feet um, you want to wear or you could use those uh, wearable blankets uh, or a one of those um, those uh, uh, blankets that uh, you know zip up and um, and don't cover you know those wearable blankets so so those are all things that you want to use to keep your baby warm also you want to make sure that your baby uh, does not sleep with you but in the same room with you so there are, are um, uh, different ways you can have your baby sleep in like a bas bassinet or a little crib in the same room right next to the bed especially if you're nursing that it's a really important but um, don't bring them in bed with you so um, hopefully we can get through this storm um, safely and healthily and um, remember um, we, uh, we just want to stay safe and healthy and uh, we don't have any more adverse outcomes in this storm. So I'm going to turn it back to our county executive. 
Thank you, Dr. Burstein. Uh, we, we have unfortunately seen uh, the great work that was done earlier today is just we're, we're having trouble catching up with Mother Nature. And uh, the driving ban that was followed by most of the individuals overnight and in the early morning hours, others have gotten on, went on the roads and unfortunately have gotten stuck. Some of them are probably uh, emergency personnel just trying to get to their work, but the situation is so bad, uh, especially around exit 56, which is the New York State Thruway, uh, and parts of uh, McKinley Parkway, Mile Strip, uh, uh, Abbott Road, Southwestern. We, we've been able to keep those mains open. Mile Strip's an issue and McKinley is now a significant issue, but you shouldn't be driving. We're keeping those roads open so that we can get through this as quickly as possible. We're not keeping them open so you can drive on them now. We know there are many neighborhoods where you can't get out of your neighborhood at this point. Uh, Erie County, as the uh, commissioner noted, has uh, engaged quite a number of contractors to provide high lifts, bucket trucks, as well as other trucks to actually scoop the snow, get it out of there if need be. Uh, this is going to take some time, a process to open up uh, these neighborhoods. Uh, thankfully, they will be working through the overnight hours and we are expecting hopefully some, some subsiding of the snow uh, on Saturday, though it does not look like based on the forecast we're going to see it over the next uh, 15 to 16 hours. So the best thing you can do is just stay home. Uh, don't put yourself at risk and then you're putting other people at risk if you get stuck uh, who have to rescue you. This is, we've been through this before. This is kind of in some ways the little brother of the storm that occurred eight years ago. The storm totals haven't reached as high as that one, uh, but they're getting up there. And uh, we are talking now about five feet of snow in some of these areas. And uh, it's when you get to that point and snow falling at rates of over three inches per hour, there's not a whole lot we can do, especially when the roads are starting to get clogged with vehicles or trucks. So please stay home. That's the best thing you can do to help us and to protect yourself. With that, I'll open up to any questions. Uh, Jeff Rousseau from Channel 7. Attorney Executive, you guys are very proactive in the approach as we have been for storms in the past in terms of telling people driving bans, stay off the road. Have the majority of the people in your mind heeded that warning? Has it been, I mean, you're saying people have been stuck, but if most people, you know, just use common sense and stay home at this point. Well, the, the question was in relation, we were proactive, we instituted driving bans, have the majority of the people followed those, those requests? And the answer is yes, the majority of the people have. But it doesn't take a majority to cause the problems, it could take just one or two people in a vehicle that clogs up a major artery. I know for a while earlier today, there was one tractor trailer that had, was going down Route 20 and jackknifed at Eden Nevin Center Road, and that clogged up all of Route 20, which, as we know, is a major arterial uh, in the uh, southern part of our county, especially in an area that was getting hit hard, and we were trying to send equipment down. So all it takes is one. I would say to, to the majority of people, thank you. Thank you for staying home. You're doing the right thing. But all it takes is one or two to get stuck, and then it can throw everything else off. Does the sheriff or the commissioner want to say anything? I, all I'd add on that is eight years ago today, our 24-hour snow total was only 24 inches. We've far surpassed that. So um, it, it is, it's, it's one vehicle, one, especially a tractor trailer, can really snarl that whole area up. And that's, that's what we're having on McKinley, Mile Strip right now. And hopefully we get all those cars out in a timely manner here. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Yes. Um, you mentioned how it becomes difficult to keep up with the amount of snow that's falling now. What is the plan of attack? Where do you go from here? How do you approach this sort of situation? Uh, the question was, it's, if, if it's difficult to keeping up with this level of snow, what's the plan of attack? What's the situation? Once again, I'll turn it over to the commissioner because we do have a plan of attack. It's just uh, it's, it's getting a little slower to implement it. Yes. Yeah. yeah so uh, typically, in a lot of those routes, they're about 35 to 40 miles for one vehicle, one plow truck. Uh, right now, we've we've doubled up and even in some cases tripled up, as well as New York State DOT that has tandems and in other cases they also have triples going. But we have those 40 other additional assets from the contractors bringing in those high lifts. It's a slower process to have to lift and scoop, but um, it's going to just take a little bit longer. Uh, you know, four hours would be a normal beat. Obviously, in these type of snowfall rates, it's gone up to six hours in some cases. But uh, with a high lift, it's going to be even slower. So we're going to be working with our contractors and with all our municipal partners side by side 
uh, through the night. Nobody's uh, going to be giving up. We're going to do 12-hour shifts, and we'll go through the end of it. But uh, it's the great work of all the people that are out on the streets right now doing that. And those are the people that I thank uh, dearly. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and I have to say the same. I mean, we need to take a big thank you to our first responders, our law enforcement, our public works employees, and the other individuals that are out there in these conditions because it is brutal. It is really bad. We, we were sitting here at the Emergency Operations Center and it started getting nicer and it started getting sunny. And then we were getting reports from the field just 10 miles south of here that it was the worst they'd seen it. So thank you to everyone who's out there. They are really risking themselves to, to keep this community open. Uh, and uh, if they weren't, <laughs> we'd be in a much worse situation. I will say this, even though the snow is as bad as it is, we are in a better such situation today than we were eight years ago at this point. Not only have we had more snowfall in a shorter time span, but we've been able to keep open major arterial roads that we did not last time, like transit road. That, that went very quickly. Even Route 5 and Route 20, we've had problems with them, but we've generally been able to keep them open. Major routes in this area, uh, Southwestern Boulevard, those became parking lots. We've been able to generally keep them open so we can get emergency vehicles through. Uh, and it just goes to show the tremendous work by everybody uh, and, and the plans that were put in place with our partners in local government and New York State to uh, try to do the best that we could. Rob, did you have a question first? Yeah, okay. tractor trailer ban, we saw a few on the throughway before things were shut down. I know there were some issues on Southwestern, like you mentioned as well. How has that been obeyed? Has it been obeyed? Have you had, have you had any issues? Uh, well, there were some issues early on. There's no doubt about it. Uh, some tractor trailers were on the throughway. Uh, the throughway is controlled by the New York State Throughway Authority. None of us have any control over that. We do know that they have been pulling vehicles off. Uh, commercial vehicles have been directed off uh, since earlier this afternoon, definitely at the Pennsylvania line. Uh, and they are trying to stage these vehicles uh, at various locations. Some of the, the individuals who are now at the Hamburg Senior Center uh, were people who were on the throughway, tractor trailer drivers, as well as just regular individuals driving. Uh, it, we're doing our best to assist the state in handling that matter. Uh, I do know the sheriff's office has been intimately involved with the 400 and the 219, uh, and, and they, there were some issues with that earlier to the point where the sheriff's office, in coordination with us, said we need to close these roads, and, and we told the state we need to close the 400, we need to close the 219. They're not our roads, but we, we had the boots on the ground and the eyes in the field, so we knew we needed to close them, and, and they agreed, so we immediately closed them. Uh, so we do have good coordination, but uh, a lot of those things we can't control when it's out of our hands, like the thruway. Do yes. you remove the travel ban in certain northern and southern areas of the county? Do you anticipate that coming back in the uh, Anything's possible. The question was, we remove the travel ban in the northern and southern parts of the county. Do you expect them to come back? Well, anything's possible. It's all going to be dependent upon this band. Based on the most recent information from the Weather Service, it doesn't look like it's moving that this, the areas that are not getting snow and haven't, gotten, haven't received much snow today are probably not going to get much of any, maybe six inches between now and Monday morning. Uh, but uh, the driving ban will stay in place for quite some time. There's no doubt about it in this, this zone that's getting hit very hard. Any other questions? If not, I want to thank everybody. We will have our next briefing at 9 p.m. And the most important thing to everyone is to be safe and well. Please follow the directions of all because it is in your own best interest. Uh, and if you are thinking about shoveling the snow, you should think again. It is very heavy. It's very wet. And as I said earlier, unfortunately, we've had our first two fatalities directly related to the storm associated with cardiac events of individuals who are trying to clear snow out of their yards. So wait. It eventually will melt or we can get someone else out there in the long run to help clear it off your yard. Thanks, everyone, and be safe and well.